Hey guys, VBaddy with another V plays, and we're going to be taking out the Key 93. Now, the Key 93 is a pretty big boy, and he is going to be much bigger than what you would see with like the Key 45 and the Key 102. But that makes sense because you lose a lot of that maneuverability in order to get more range on the gun, maybe a little bit more altitude. So, what is this thing? I equate it to being a tier 7 non-premium version of what you had with like the BF-110C6. So with that kind of uh, an aircraft, if you guys had the pleasure of flying that tier 4 premium, it has an accompaniment of four light machine guns and one big huge cannon for the tier. And that's what you get here is we have two 20s instead of the machine guns, but we also have a big old 57. And while you may have had a big old honking cannon on the Key 45 and the 102, they were short range. This has an incredibly long range, so it's a lot more like a sniper platform. And with that, you kind of get the same type of issues that you find when you guys are flying like a Yak-9 or something like that. Like, sometimes the guns behave and they do what you want them to, and sometimes they just do whatever they want. So let's see if we can get lucky with these guns. There was a good hit, and that locked in the zone. So we'll evade a little bit here, but I'm going to start heading towards the mid. We're going to F2 the airfield, because that's really where our team should be heading right now. Actually, you know what? Oh, I thought we might have been able to get in there and help out. We're going to go for the mid just to buy some time, but they may be picking up both airfields here, because I do see a pretty heavy effort going on over at our sector and I'm not going to be able to get there in time so my best bet is going to be putting pressure on them in the form of going after these zones oh that was a great hit we got really lucky there really really lucky okay you know what Vincent It's going to be hard to outmaneuver Vincent here, but we're going to give it a shot. Got him and secured the zone. Nice. But now we got a light fighter on her six LA five. Kicking on the burners here, burning through tail gunners on. We took his engine and we took his pilot. So that'll give us a ghost of a chance here. Oh, we're heading towards the airfield. I didn't even realize we got a little turned around in our evasion there. That was weird. No, we never got any of the hit indicators. And we never got the big hit we were really hoping for there. I have a feeling we got one of the heavies on our six. Okay, let's dip the nose. Angle that rudder back up. Get on the six of one of these light defense fighters. Okay, can we get lucky again? Kind of. Not quite what I was hoping for, though. Oh, because of that sluggish fire with this gun. Okay. What can we do here? Uh, we got one of his buddies on our six. Oh, we got him. We got him. Nice. Oh, hello, ally. I'm going to dip the nose. We're going to go get some repairs because we definitely need them right now. And I have a feeling we're going to have to head back to our own command center in order to get ourselves uh, back onto the board here. So we're doing all that we can right now. It looks like Red Baron is a disconnect. So that's going to be a little bit harsh. We'll see what we can do. The worst part is, is that there's actually a central zone. So he's going to keep respawning and just flying right through that sector. So it's going to make it really hard to maintain that central site. So yeah, they made all five bombers made it over to this sector. So we're going to have to go and try and do a recapture of that site. And because we have this massive range, we can already start trying to engage with this guy, but no joy on those shots. 
And of course we do have a light tail gunner so we can add a little bit of insult there. Now what are you? B26? Getting a little bit of frame hitching here. Now what's this heavy? Oh boy. We overcommitted to the wrong target. Okay. We're going to have to dip and dive away from them. We'll see what we can do here. There we go. Secured the zone through that kill. And... See what we can do over here. The bomber flight's already heading towards the enemy airfield. That might give us a bit of a chance. That... P-38 looks like he's distracted right now, so that'll work out well. The bomber is heading into the zone. He's not too far ahead of me, and it looks like the air defense aircraft are heading up to meet him, which is going to be right where I want them to be. Oh, nice. Nice grab there. I was trying to time that shot. Okay, up. Rudder over, create kind of like a pseudo braking maneuver there by using gravity to our advantage. I think we, we must have one of those shells hit because look how low that plane's health is. There we go. We're back on the board, guys. We're back on the board, but we can't count these chickens yet. So let's see what we can do about getting over to this airfield. See what we can do to capture it. We're probably going to lose that other garrison, but I'm okay with that. We're hitting the boost cooler because why not? Might as well start getting energy back in that 25 second piggy bank there. And we'll try and escort our B-17 the best that we can. Because as he comes into this zone, he's going to line up some targets for us. So I'm glad we got some of that boost energy back. This guy needs to be the focus. Oh, trouble. So I think this guy sees me coming. And it's squall line. So let's hop into the tail gunner, see if we can tease him a bit. Okay, we are actually maintaining distance on him, but we lost two zones very quickly. Is he trying to get the regen off of this site? There is no regen. Oh, nice. Okay. Bombers are here. That secured us this zone. Come on, get out of here, guys. You're, you're supposed to be dead. Dip that nose, see if we can get the... Oh, we're not going to get the repair. It's going to be 16 seconds till this is available again. All right, heading for the mid. We need to do what we can to help out here. Zone capture, enemy kills. That's what we need to be doing right now. This guy's low health. There we go. Now we're getting that phantom smoke. The dirt and stuff showing up on our view screen now we're getting trolled by the guns we had too much good luck earlier come back around there we go see you Vincent good hit people keep dying all around me though Not quite enough. So close. Not the game, but getting that kill. Got him. That got the zone, at least. So I feel like I'm doing my job best that I can right now. There's the shell. The rounds are coming back into focus. And that was match. So, hey, you know what? Hmm. 
not the best. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I'm still happy with the performance. With having somebody with a disconnect, uh, I'm going to assume it's a disconnect. I'm still happy with these results because I know that we did the best that we could. And I've talked about this a lot is that you got to set your own milestones for what you want to consider a victory or what you want to consider uh, a good match. Because when you start tying your enjoyment to win rates and things that are outside of your control, you start to get some resentment and that's not the way that you should play video games at least in my opinion i think it should be fun and a great way to keep it fun is to have personal goals and my personal goal is to try and break 10,000 personal points and to be a contributor on the team i want to be trying to aid in capture as much as possible or if i'm in an aircraft that isn't very good at that secure a zone and get as many capture points or regain as many capture points as i can in a single sector if i'm in a turn and burn and that's how i measure my success rate so for instance here you'll see we got 688 capture points all while attacking and we aided in capturing seven sectors there were only five on the board so we really went and helped get both air bases both command centers and we helped capture the garrison three different times. So you can't say that we weren't trying to do what our role is, which is to try and go after uh, those heavies, go after the bombers. And if we look at my aerial target destroyed, we did kill a bomber, uh, attack aircraft, three heavies, uh, and we also killed two multi rolls, but a lot of air defense fighters, mostly those heavy air defense fighters, and then some of the light ones over the command centers. Again, this gun is pretty trolly, and it, it just is what it is. Uh, this is only my second match in this, and uh, this one was a little bit better, but they were both losses, and it really just it comes down to whether this gun is doing what you want it to. Uh, but is, again, if you are looking to have enjoyment uh, i have this as my measure of a good match and since i felt as though i was doing what i needed to do i'm okay with the trolley gun because the times that it hit was much more enjoyable than just getting consistent fire from like a set of 20s uh getting that big 57 to make contact just feels good and overall the damage output isn't too bad usually you sacrifice like your cumulative damage rate it's more like it's big hits opposed to being some type of cumulative damage rate uh, but we maintain that with the 220s on here as well so getting 368 damage per second i mean for a heavy that's not stellar uh, but it's going to hold its own and you don't really feel like you're underpowered so the times that the 57 doesn't hit the 20s are still going to be able to assist you to be able to get a lot of good damage in so let's take a look at that gun actually and see what she's doing so 3444 feet at base okay that is like what one and a half thousand meters is that if my conversion's about right uh and then we are running long barrels so we are actually at optimal nearly out to four thousand feet uh, but we can hit targets at nearly five thousand feet so i mean we can theoretically hit them uh you know whether you actually do or not that's that's on you uh again you, this is not an aircraft that when you guys are going down the japanese heavy line uh people love the key 45 and the key 102 because they're highly maneuverable heavies but a lot of people are shell-shocked when they get to the key 93 thinking they're going to get just a tier 7 version of their key 102 and that's definitely not what you're getting here you're more or less getting that bf 110c6 or a heavy version of like a yak 9 so hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at this bird uh, and if you're working down this line just be aware it's going to be a departure from the normal uh, and also be aware that if you see a key 93 Give him a bit of a wide berth initially because he may be shooting at you if you're in a head-on with this big honking cannon from a much further range than you're initially ex expecting. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Enjoy.